On today's episode, it's not a ship or a plane, but it may be better than both. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In transportation, bigger is usually better. Whether it's ships, trains, motor vehicles, or airplanes, larger, more powerful machines have always translated into lower seat mile or ton mile costs, something especially important when those different modes of transport all compete with one another. But physics, as always, while well, it's the Supreme Court justice for engineers, and increasing speed, the other factor that governs transportation, well, it's heavily dependent on the medium through which the machine moves. Now, rubber-tired road-going vehicles face the dual difficulties of mechanical friction and aerodynamic drag, things which obey scaling laws that act as real limits to development. Now, ships have similar hydrodynamic drag and displacement factors, requiring truly enormous horsepower to move at speeds of, say, 30 knots or faster. Now, airplanes are fast, but they have limited internal volume and lift capability relative to the amount of fuel burned, and this restricts their use for commodity cargoes. But what if there was something that combines the best attributes of both ships and airplanes? Well, there are a couple of technologies that have been explored over the years, notably air cushion vehicles and wing-in ground effect aircraft. Now, air cushion vehicles or hovercraft, which use ducted high pressure air under the vehicle constrained by rubber skirts, well, they use an effect much like the air cushion that suspends the puck in the familiar tabletop air hockey game, except the air is supplied by the vehicle itself. Now, once very large hovercraft were used for daily high-speed shuttle service across the English Channel, and in military use, very large hovercraft are still used for heavy lift, high-speed transportation that can transition from sea to land seamlessly. But today, cargo-carrying hovercraft have not developed for civilian use. Wing and ground effect aircraft, however, may change this. The concept is simple. Contain and manage the region of higher pressure air underneath the specially designed, very low-flying aircraft. Now, this reduces the need for large span lifting surfaces and allows engineers to build very large structures that move at aircraft-like speeds, but just above the surface of the water. Without the need to generate enough aerodynamic lift to climb up out of ground effect, structures can be simpler, bigger, and carry heavier payloads. The Soviet Union developed prototypes that they called ekranoplans, and they were truly large and fast, but strangely, this spurred very little development in the West. But technologies are changing, and one firm, the aptly named Flying Ship Company, is developing autonomous wing and ground effect vessels that the company claims are 30 to 50% more energy efficient than aircraft of similar size, but 10 times faster than boats. The first models will have modest payloads, just over a ton, but with a range of 500 nautical miles using electric power plants. The company expects their second generation machine to double both the range and payload capacity figures. So how big could these vehicles get? Well, the Soviet Ekrana plan program produced a 380-ton vehicle the size of an Airbus Super Jumbo that could travel 340 miles an hour, driven by eight turbofan engines. So truly large machines are possible. Now, the flying ship company has interest from commercial cargo customers as well as DARPA, and the firm is currently hiring marine, aerospace, and systems engineers, so wing and ground effect autonomous vehicles are well past the proof of concept stage. It's technically feasible and could deliver exactly what the cargo market loves – heavy lift, high speed, and low cost. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.